Now black cutworm recolonize Indiana each spring uh, as moths. They fly into the state. And what they do is, once they get to the state, is look for a place to lay eggs. This field behind us is an ideal place to lay eggs because there are a lot of broadleaf weeds in it. The way we know when they're here are pheromone traps. And pheromone traps are, of course, catching only male moths. And so they're not always a reliable predictor of how much feeding you're going to have. But they are a reliable predictor of when moths enter the state. And that usually happens on storm fronts. This is a bucket trap or unitrap. This is what we use for monitoring black cutworm and many other insects. Uh, you can see that there's a pheromone lure up here that attracts male moths that think they're going to find a female when they get there. They don't, of course. They blunder around, bounce through this little cylinder and into the bottom of the trap. The uh, red rectangle is a strip that has insecticide in it so the moths don't bang around for very long before they die. These are all male moths. And black cutworm are one of the easier moths to identify because they have a characteristic black dagger shape on the forewing. So at this time it's reasonable to expect that there would be some black cutworm mating and of a position egg laying in these fields, particularly the field where I'm standing, which has one of their favorite hosts, which is chickweed. This is chickweed. There's plenty of it in the state, uh, especially in uh, uh, no-till or conservation tillage fields. If we searched around here and dug in around this chickweed, looked through the leaves closely, we could very well find eggs or very small larvae. Now the next thing that is going to happen in the next few days in this field behind me and, and many of the fields around here uh, is burn down herbicide application. Now these weeds of course are going to take a little while to completely die. Uh, the ideal situation, which is seldom uh, a reality, is that the weeds are completely dead and then there's a window of time with no living plants in the field before our corn pops out of the ground. That'll result in many of the insects here, including black cutworm, starving to death. One of the side effects of the move to earlier and earlier planting, as, which is actually a benefit in terms of pest management, is that we no longer have corn as vulnerable for as long to black cutworm. Black cutworm take a while to get to the stage where they can injure corn. They need some heat units. They need to be of a sufficient size to attack a corn plant. Now with earlier planting, that corn plant is most likely to be larger and large enough in some cases that black cutworm can't cut them. They can't cause that diagnostic damage that causes problems. They can still feed a little bit on those plants, but of course the cutting by large larvae is what we worry about in terms of black cutworm. That's less frequent when corn is planted early. <laughs>